How easy is it to draft a versatile and very chic roll collar? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you step by step. Hi, I'm Charlotta. I'm a professional pattern cutter and this is my school of pattern cutting where I create lots of tutorials which teach you how to draft and adapt your own clothes. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draft a really versatile roll collar which is chic and easy to make. You might have seen Jackie Kennedy or the Duchess of Sussex wearing one and now you can draft your own. So let's get drafting! I've traced around my front basic borders and my back basic borders. And I've marked the center front and back. I haven't bothered about the darts because I'm concentrating on the neckline, but of course you might want to. And this is the first in my series on um, sort of volume around the neckline. And I'm also gonna draft a really clever portrait collar, which is a version of a short collar, but with a completely different neckline. So this is a sh is a roll collar and it can look like this, so quite high. Um, it's normally done on a fold or single. And Jackie Kennedy wore quite a few of them. And the more loose ones will be like this. And then her really tailored ones, a stand collar. So if you want to make a really high neck tailored ones, then have a look at my stand collar tutorials. But these will be really nice for like a sort of boat neck, um, they also work quite well on a lower neck, in which case they look like this. And then they have the same at the back. And then of course you would have to think how to get in. So you can either have um, them just meeting at the back with a button stand and a zip. If it's a um, jacket, you might have a button stand um, extending or just have it meeting again and then have your button stand down here. Or what's also really nice and a bit romantic, which can be quite nice, is to either have a bow at the back, which will look lovely on a sort of um, slightly loose top, or to have a pussy bow at the front. Um, so it looks like this. So, it, And if you're doing the whole collar on fold, you get a really nice big, Bow. So it'll look lovely in a um, in any fabric really, but in a silk, can you imagine? And of course, this really depends on the fabric. If you use it in a wool, it's sort of um, organic, but has some standing. If you do a really thin silk, it's really going to drape around your neck. So try on with, your, with some fabrics. Let's get it actually drafted. So the first thing I'm going to do is redraw my neckline and it's a really easy, nice collar. So I'm just going to go down a little bit. I don't want to go too low. I'm going to go 2.5 centimeters, which is an inch if you're being imperial. And then on the, on the shoulder, I'm actually going to go five centimeters out. But this is of course completely up to you how far you want to go out and five centimeters two inches and on the back again I need to go out five centimeters to match my front and then on my center back I actually don't want to go too far down because I want to keep it quite fitted so I'm only going to go just over one centimeter so about half an inch and then I'm going to redraw my new neckline and I always start drawing necklines by going out with a straight angle, so at 90 degrees. And then I can draw in my curve. And just by starting with a straight line, it tells me where I have to put the curve. So I don't want to curve it up here, I want to curve it down there. But of course, if you have a U, like a boat shape, boat neck, you might actually not go down and you might go like this but I'm doing sort of a, a slightly lower neck. And then at the back again, I'm just finding the right curve on my pattern master. And 
this. And that's my new neckline to put my collar on. And I might want to, this actually looks a bit square, so I'm actually gonna look at it again and just curve a bit more. So this is a bit more pleasant because you want just a seamless curve rather than two straight lines and a curve. And that's what you sort of, that's just actually looking at your pattern and thinking, dude, does that look nice or does it look a bit too square? So this is much more pleasant looking, it's much more round. So all now I need to do is measure my front and my back. And of course you need to measure your own. Do not measure, take my measurements. Because can you see, for example, even the difference between these two curves is gonna make a difference in measurements. So make sure to measure your own pattern. Like normally with some of my numbers, you can follow me, but with other times you really need to do your own. Um, and I'm just walking on my pattern master and just double checking that it's correct, hopefully it is. And I, some people like to use a tape, but I prefer to sort of slowly walk my pattern mask around. And I'm using a really thick pen. You should, of course, use a, a thin pencil so you get a really precise line. out my collar I need to decide how I want to fasten it and I'm just going to do with a bow at the back. If you're doing a normal closure at the front you would now put in your button stand and then your collar could either just finish here which would be quite nice or if you have a button stand it's a bit tricky to sort because you the collar is going to do in a bias, so it's better to just to finish um, or you need to sort of fuse it and strengthen a bit or use a sand collar. But I'm going to do my tie at the back, but in order to tie really neatly, what I'm going to do is just move a centimetre away either side of the centre back, so I've got some space to tie it, so it leaves me that much space to tie my bow in the center back, but of course you might want to make it slightly bigger. So see what size of bow you want and then move back a bit. So in which case I actually need to have 12 centimeters and 60.5, so that's really straightforward. I now need to get another piece of long paper so I can draw on my collar. Just before I move on, i just like to remind you of my Patreon page, where you can find lots of bonus drafting videos, special tips and tricks, full fashion projects, and behind the scenes diaries every month. I'm gonna actually fold my paper. And that is going to become my center front. So I'm going to just draw in the measurements. So it's 16 centimeters, which is my shoulder seam. And then it's another 12 centimeters. And then the same, then you have to decide how high you want your collar to be. So if you, for example, just made it a single height, you could just say I'm going to make it four centimeters. So you're going to do it on the fold, which makes it eight centimeters. Or if you want to have a really nice collar, but it folds over. So a finished collar actually looks like this. And then you've got your top. That's really flattering. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a 
color which rolls and then folds as well. So you get a bit more um, volume and 3Dness. So I'm going to make mine three centimeters high, which means the overall color needs to be um, six centimeters and double of that is 12 centimeters. And then that gets folded and folded again. So it's quite a nice, it's just one long piece of fabric, which is really nice and easy. And in a way you need to, it might be worth, depending on your fabric, just take a piece of the fabric and see how it drapes. Because you want quite a drapey fabric if you have really stiff cotton canvas. I don't think it will work. So this is for, this is where I stitch it to. And this is my shoulder. So shoulder, and that's my back. And then I can draw in my fold lines as well. But in a way, what you do is you just iron, you iron it in half. And then you stitch these two sides into your neckline. And then you fold it again to wear it. And then if you want your bow, you would just extend it for however long you want it. So you might need a longer piece of fabric. So I'm just gonna draw it like that, but I'm just gonna say extend. So you can draw a bigger bow. But then if you're ready to cut out, because you're gonna cut this on bias, so I can't cut it on the fold. So what you need to do is you put your seam allowance on. And then you can pin it together and you cut it out on two layers. And then the whole thing is on the bias. And I'm doing it in red. That's quite important. I'm going to put a few on just to really stand out. And then you can pin it together and cut it all out. So this is my collar all cut out. I'm just gonna quickly mark the shoulder point on the other side. So all you do is you just snip it. And if you want to put, if you want to make it into a bow, what I would suggest, because can you see, this is already a really long piece of um, bias cut fabric. So it's gonna take up quite a lot of space. So rather than cutting a really, really long one, I would suggest you cut this out three times. So you've got the middle bit, and then you can attach one side to this end and one side to the other end. And that way you get a nice long bow. That's my collar. So I'm gonna say cut three. Um, and then I'm gonna say two for bow. So it's a bit like making bias binding. If you wanna use this method, I would actually suggest that you finish it on a right, on a 45 degree angle, because that gives you a far nicer finish. If you don't on a, because if you, if you stitch together on a straight on this line, it's actually gonna be on a bias on the fabric, which means it's horrible to sew. If you do like that, you actually guaranteed it's a nice neat line and it moves as a grain. So that's your roll call all finished. You can just mark. So my, my center point is a fold and this is my sip. And of course, make sure you add seam allowance everywhere. Decide what straight of grain you want to use for your bodice pieces and then you're ready to make your draft. If you have enjoyed this video, I'd love a thumbs up from you and any feedback in the, in the comments below. And if you're new, you might also consider subscribing so you never miss any future videos. 
I'd love you to join me on my Patreon page where I have lots of more in-depth drafting tutorials, full drafting and sewing guides for garments and lots of tips and tricks and behind the scenes diary. I've put a link in the comments below and that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching and happy drafting.